Hoes. Seven nights at Hallis, what it is, what it do. Since Bobby Ingram, Curtis Ennis. Know that we've been loyal even when we wasn't winning. A trusted source for the news. Seven nights at Hallis. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another edition of 79th and Hallis, man. It has been a long time. I feel like it's been like probably like a month since we've actually done the show, man. But we are back, your boy Scott and Flows. Y'all can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Barbershare Scott at Flows and Dulini. Follow the Barbershare Network at Barbershare Net. Uh, follow 79th and Hallis at 79th and Hallis on Twitter. And of course, visit and subscribe to our Patreon, man. That is patreon.com backslash Barbershare Network, man. We've got a Good show for y'all. It has been a crazy week in the world of the Chicago Bears. A lot of people, a lot of things have gone down over these last couple of uh, days, man. We've had, uh, you know, all these different trades, free agent signings. Shout out to everybody who tuned into the live reaction show. For I'm not going to hold you yesterday. We had about almost got up to 1,500 in the chat yesterday. So shout out to y'all. But we are here. Uh, my brother, how you feeling today? It's been, it's been, been, been a while. Been a lot this happened since the last time we recorded. Um, I would say today I feel a little bittersweet. Okay. Um, I feel bittersweet. It feels bittersweet simply because I've, I've seen like a lot of uh, uh, videos that fans and the like have produced showing Justin Fields and his moments in Chicago and uh, like gone too soon With over the, the video. I, I, I just seen and see you again on a couple. On I saw couple. see you again, and then I saw uh, for the Temptations movie. I miss my buddy. <laughs> and so it's uh I like like I have a felt emotion with it. I'm like, damn, that's it's it is crazy because I have a video of my homie Tony. Uh, I think Tony's name is like Tony Spector on Twitter. So Marcellus D 10 or some shit on Twitter, but it's my best friend. And I both I know the moment when me and him felt that like joy of getting Justin Fields. Um, and it was during that draft, and his uh, his wife Taylor took a video of him. And it was like the Bears select Justin Fields. And Tony's like, yes, sir. It's like a, just a joyous moment because it was like the change was happening. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When Mr. Bisky was drafted, it was like, they go to Bears making another dumbass decision. It was like business as usual. Getting Justin Fields is like, oh, my goodness, something changed. We realized we're turning the corner. And so to see it all kind of unravel the way it has and Justin is no longer on the Bears but on the Steelers, that shit's kind of saddening. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, it's and football is never just a game, but it also is just a game. But knowing the impact he had on the city, I mean, folks love Justin Fields. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it's bittersweet. So right now I'm like, damn. You know, and I would love to have that mindset to be like, man, shit, it's, it's Caleb's era. Let's move on. But it's just not, it's not that simple. You know what I'm saying? So I feel a little bit of grief currently. Shout out Billy Ice in the chat. Said, Did y'all hear the Courtney, Courtney Cronin report? The polls had a better offer, but the team had an established QB1. So we showed. Yeah, I read that, by the way. Great article by Courtney. Uh, we'll get into that like in a minute about how polls, the polls said he was going to do Justin right. And he took yeah. better draft capital over putting Justin in a better position, even though we had a report that came out this morning for Sports Illustrated that <clears throat> the Steelers plan on giving Russell Wilson a long term contract. But if you read the actual article, it says at the end of the season. That means he still got to play well. Yeah. <laughs> so I still look at that as 50 50. But to go off what you were saying, like yesterday, like, like I like I clarified at the end of I'm not gonna hold you yesterday. Like, I wasn't happy about the trade. I was just happy that people told me that we were wrong. It ended up oh, looking God. wrong. That that's that's really all I have. But the actual trade, I get the emotion attached to Justin Fields. You know what I'm saying? So I understand how people are in their in their feelings and emotional about it. Um, what happened? Well, you just named the moment when he got drafted. I was at the, I was at home, which with y'all when 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 it happened. I remember the day like it was yesterday. I had zero plans actually watching the draft. I remember that was the first day that the Aaron Rodgers trade rumors came out. Mm -hmm. Actually, two years before he actually did get traded, but that's when he you know voiced his displeasure of you know having a year with you know Jordan Love being behind him. He didn't like that. And then I was just like, man, the Bears got the 20th pick. They're not going to do shit. I'm not even going to watch. So I think I watched the White Sox game that night. I think they were playing like the, the Yankees or some shit. I knew that was when the White Sox had their actual good season in that shitty rebuild. And I remember just being on Twitter scrolling, and I saw uh, 
I think it was Adam Schefter or Ian Rapp. No, it was Rich Eisen. Rich Eisen uh, tweeted, it is quarterback time in Chicago. My best Rich Eisen impersonation. Uh, the Bears are trading up. And I felt like my, I felt like I was about to hyperventilate. And then I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Are they going to say Justin? Like, I just felt like they were going to say Justin. Because while I, was, I wasn't watching the draft, I was paying attention to the players that were coming off. And Justin kept drafting, dropping. <laughs> and the, the, the natural Bears pessimism of these niggas are going to take Mac Jones honestly never crossed my mind. Like, not one time. It, it just didn't. Everything just moved fast. I just knew they were going to take Justin Fields. So when I saw the Brad Biggs report, the Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, I blacked out. And um, but I yelled, we hugged, we were talking about it. I ordered his jersey at 2 a.m. As soon as it came out, granted, I ain't get that shit for about two, three months. Mm-hmm. I ordered it that same fucking night. So I understand the, the love that people have for Justin. And Justin was a great guy. He was always cool to be around. If you had a question for him, outside of a few times, he was upset. But, you know, that comes like when playing for, you know, this team and all the losses they took. For the most part, he was he was. Answer any question you want. Nice guy. If you saw him in the hallways of Hollis, he'd say what up to you. He was a cool dude. And he he never complained. Never complained. You know what I'm saying? I was there that crazy day where he said those things about Lug Lou Getsy and the scheme. And you know, and I was and which was that that was the beginning of the end for me. I was like, That was ah. yeah, yeah. Once I they hugged too, I said, Nope, it's over. That's not how shit works. It don't work that way. We I tweeted out the uh the fucking picture of um What's my man? Did Dwight Howard and Stan Van Gundy remember when they hugged? And that was that was the end of that run too. Yeah. But I, and I just remember being there, and I remember we were getting ready to head to the locker room, and one of the communication people was like, "Oh, Justin wants to talk to y'all." And as soon as he came talk, oh yeah, this is a PR statement. Somebody told him he should need to go down. But that was just the beginning of the end for man. And Justin was placed. I think, as we know, Twitter's not the place for nuance. Yeah. Even my show sometimes isn't a place for you and you knew one. Like I said at the beginning of the show, it's only entertainment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, as Orlando says in the chat, folks, Hollywood Scott, I, I, I get on my, my heel shit, but on, on some real shit, it was a fucked up situation. I believe it was 50-50, fucked up situation. He also didn't play up to expectations, but he could have complained. He could have, you know, called people out. He could have said, get me out of here. Even through this last two months, he could have called his agent. And David Moore together and said, yo, get me the fuck out of it. And I'm not saying that he he probably was doing that, but it was very silent. It wasn't loud like a, a lot of other quarterbacks or players in the NFL would have done. So you got to give him credit for that. So I understand the emotion. It's, it, it, you know, somebody put a poll yesterday. Who was the, uh, what was the more sad Chicago breakup moment over the last 10 years? Was it, was it uh, Derrick Rose getting traded? Was it the 2016 Cubs getting broken up? Or was it Justin Fields? I still think Derrick Rose is number one, like by by a large margin, just because he's from Chicago. You know how great he was. You know that he was the MVP. You know they got to the Eastern Conference Finals. He's the first person after like only outside there's the Bears, the Bulls never been to the Eastern Conference Finals outside of Michael Jordan era, and Derrick Rose took them there. So I understand that too, and it also Derrick was more injuries, and so I understand the emotion attached to it. Am I as emotional as other fans? No. I, 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 you know, me, I, I, once I know that something's going to happen, my grieving process happened months ago. Yeah. My grieving process happened towards the end of the season yeah. where I was like, and I know people shout out our guy, our boy Isaiah pulling out my old tweets to my, you can't get rid of Justin. That was my grieving process. Once, once, once the regular season ended, my grieving process was over. Yeah. And, and then I started thinking about, you know, more of a Caleb Williams. I'm not taking back any of my Caleb Williams criticisms that we had during the regular season. He, he struggled for sure. But also, we're going to talk about situations with Justin. Got to talk about situations with Caleb. That nigga had one of the worst defenses in college football last year. Lost a lot of his weapons. So it's the same thing. So I understand the emotion of, of Justin Fields. And, and I'm not mad at Bears fans for feeling that way. I do think that it's going to take a couple of days. But one thing about Bears fans that, you know, even though we're in our civil war that has finally come to an end, at the end of the day, we all care about one thing. And that is that the Chicago Bears win the fucking Super Bowl and be a winning team. As our guy Greg Bragg says, time for all of us to come back together again and be one big happy family. I think and I think by this time next week, we'll all be like, okay, Caleb's gonna be the guy. We're gonna what are we gonna do with this ninth pick? And we gonna Nick, we rallied around Mitch. So it's not like it's not like it's not like the Bears are getting ready to draft Bo Nix. Like, you know what I'm saying? Get excited. You know, I'm not expecting you to be excited as I am right now. It's gonna take longer for other people. But you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's just how I, I feel about it, man. Let's let's talk about the actual trade. What's yeah. your opinion 
on the trade, the compensation, and do you think Ryan Poles fucked this shit up? Well, yeah, he played his hand too too early, and he didn't play his hand consistently enough. When it comes to dealing with a situation where you have a quarterback there and you have the ability to draft a instant starter um, generational prospect, you you don't want to make it so that people know you're not going to keep him or you're going to keep him. And I feel like there was always an inconsistent message. And I think it really came across in what they got in that trade. Of course, you saw Courtney's article about there was something more, but they wanted him to go to a good situation. I think that is a very honorable thing to do. Yeah. Business-wise, I don't know how smart it is, but Not honorable. smart as business thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I still think. You you shouldn't have business without honor. So I'm 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 glad he did that. At the yeah. end of the day, you probably would have. I thought he was probably worth a fourth. Um, and so of course it can turn into a fourth depending on playing time. But I and, and there's a chance of that I don't know if if Mike Tomlin might get fed up with Russ shit by week seven, or, you know or Russ might get hurt. You never know. So I I I'm, I don't have an issue with the trade per se because at least there's a possibility of it. You weren't going to get a first. Hell no. You weren't going to get a second. Hell no. The chance of you getting a third were like freaking 38% out of 100. So it was very low. Fourth made sense. Six was low. But if they were doing that be, to send him to a good situation, then I'm cool with that. At the end of the day, you don't have as many draft picks because of your own decisions. And I don't think even getting a fourth, you find somebody game changing for him. At the end of the day, you had to offload him simply because you're drafting someone else. And because you're drafting someone else, you have to make the move. And so you kind of have to take what you can get. Um, so I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I think it's a it's the correct thing morally to do business wise. You probably could have got a, a higher pick. Yeah, man, I, lo- I look at it as like this, man. Um, I do. I feel Ryan Pace. I felt like not Ryan Pace. Ryan Paul. I feel like he royally fucked the, the conversation up. Uh, I do love that he did right. Did right by Justin. And that just shows you how much respect he has. For Justin, um, you know, we'll get into the locker room's reaction in a minute. Um, but it just shows how much respect he had for him, and he he's man of his word. If there's anything we can say about Ryan Poles, right or wrong, no matter how y'all feel about him, the man is a man of his word, one hundred percent. So he said he's gonna, uh, d- uh, you know, try to you know do well for Justin, and he did that, giving up draft capital. But they could have got more. I think the the first round was never gonna happen. Despite what Mel Kuyper in his uh, toupee said, the first rounder was never going to fucking happen. Second rounder was also highly unlikely. But I definitely feel they could have at least got the Sam Darnold package with a third rounder and another pick if if um Ryan Poe was played his hand right. And what I mean by that, he went to the combine a little too cocky. He's feeling himself. You know, yeah. he was enjoying all of the press, you know, all of the uh, all the you know the, the spotlight, all the attention on him. But he should have did the same thing he did last year. We're still through an evaluation process. Justin's still our quarterback. I'd have to be blown away. Then people might think, oh, he might actually not take Caleb Williams. And that's what it is. I think a mix of it was a mix of both. I do believe that the league was telling people that they don't view Justin Fields the way that a certain select percentage of Bears fans uh, feel about him, which I know is a, is, a, is a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow pause. But at the same time, there was also a lot of quarterbacks who are not better than Justin Fields who were getting signed and were getting more trade compensation, you know, like Sam Donald, like a Drew Locke, you know, like a Sam Howell, guys like that. But also the difference between these situations, what I've tried to tell people over these last couple of weeks, is they don't have a fifth-year option. That is a big, important wrinkle in this conversation. You have to pay Justin Fields. Not only do you have to pay Justin Fields, you have to give up draft assets. So if I know that you have to get rid of that, why am I going to offer you the highest bidder? So I feel like Ryan Poles could have played his hand a little more differently, but I don't think that you're going to get any higher than a third rounder anyway. And uh, shout out to a lot of people in our, our in our uh, mentions yesterday. We had a, a good civil conversation in the 79th of Allen's mentions and some of my mentions. Um, and somebody, shout out uh, Betsy, one of our uh, – followers and listeners real cool said that they couldn't get over the fact that um you know that you know that they didn't do right by justin i'm like i know a lot of nfl fans don't want to hear this this isn't just um with the bears a lot of nfl fans don't want to hear this but the your guy theory like we said on this show is a real thing put yourself in ryan pole's position if i'm gonna get fired 
I'm going to get fired with the niggas I brought in. Yeah. Not with people from somebody else. You can live with that. It's kind of like uh, if you're if you're Michael Jordan or some shit like that. I know Michael Jordan. You know, he did pass the ball a couple times before he got into the pass the ball thing. He's like, I'm going to lose with me taking the last shot. Yeah. You know, you know, we always shit on LeBron when he passed like Alex Caruso or some shit or, or Austin Reeves. And we like, you should took it because you can live with your best player taking the shot. So that's what it is. And, and they were never going to give Justin this perfect situation. I think last year, if Caleb Williams was coming out last year, they'd have traded him last year. I think it's all about uh, quarterback. And pres- I don't think that, as you know, Joe, CJ Stroud was amazing this year. But yeah. I don't think anybody thought he was going to be what the fuck he was. He was better yeah. last year. And in my opinion, any of his years, Ohio State and Bryce Young was the rightful number one pick, even though we like to have an amnesia about that now. And I'm not out on Bryce either. I think Bryce, once they don't surround him with bullshit, is going to be a better quarterback. But they never felt that highly about Bryce to give up on Justin. This particular situation, you can't eventually you got to shoot. I know there's two things that sports fans, specifically NFL fans, love. Draft capital and managing salary cap. <laughs> At the end of the day, draft picks are just draft picks until you get your player. And that was my uh, retort to the stack the team thing for Justin. Because I'm like, okay, if Justin doesn't play well, you're going to have the same problem you have as the San Francisco 49ers. And Dante, disagree with me. Yeah, we've never been to multiple Super Bowls and NFC Championships. I get that. You're right. But I would rather hit on a quarterback and actually win than keep going. And, and on a lower situation, what was the biggest problem with the 2018, 2019 Bears teams? The quarterback. Yeah. Like you said, Joe, on, on the show last night, they gave Mitch weapons. It was the quarterback. How many times did we say 2019 was one of the most hype Bears seasons ever? Because the Bears felt like they had everything but the quarterback. So it don't matter if you got Marvin Harrison Jr., Keenan Allen, and, and DJ Moore stack defense if Justin isn't making the passes to make the passes. So that's my whole debate about that was, too. Um, let's talk about the locker room. Uh, me and you said during the season, just how much support that this, this that that fucking locker room loves Justin Fields. We saw it on display. Her had Herb on the show this week. He said that same thing. Adam Johns on the show. My man Jason Lewis. We all said they loved him. So I wasn't surprised at the emotional reaction to it last night. Uh, yeah. Jaquan Briscoe had the funniest tweet the night. Don't talk to me. Which I don't know. I just the way he tweeted it was just funny as hell. Well, yeah, her uh Khalil Herbert had the melting face emoji, Travis Gibson, not Travis Gibson, Travis Gibson, who's not on the Bears more said they never they never uh, deserved him anyways. It was like five or six different tweets from people who were bears or former bears. Um, what was your opinion on, on, on the reaction? Do you think that's gonna be a problem later on? For a younger player, it might be a problem. Because a younger player, like a young person in life period, has to understand that your loyalties and where they lie do not transfer to every other person around you. And then when you're in a situation that is like the NFL, your loyalties and what you expect are not what the management expects. Because while, yes, it's your guy, unfortunately, the fact that it is your guy can blind you to the reality of the situation. And this is not me calling Justin terrible or something. It's just the reality of bias. Bias plays a... a uh, a part in almost everything we do in life, if not everything. And so while I understand that it was um, kind of hard and heartbreaking for him, I'm glad that they showed that emotion because it lets you know how much Justin has influenced the locker room. When a lot of people said, oh, he's not a leader, you don't have the locker room. And I always talk, I always would say, I'm in the locker room. They love him. He is their guy. He may not be the vocal, yell at your teammates, Tom Brady type person, but he leads them. And they love him. And this reaction is further proof that he was always a leader. Um, if they have the mindset of someone who's been in the league, like a Keenan Allen, like a DJ Moore, they'll understand that this is business. It's always personal. I don't care anybody says it's always personal, but it's also business. The personal aspect is there, but it's also business. And understanding that you think, okay, let's look at it from a business standpoint. I'm Ryan P- uh, Poles. I'm a general manager in this in the NFL. I have to deal with the fact that my job will rest upon how good this team is. It doesn't matter if I give him a lot of uh, pieces. If he doesn't succeed, it's not good enough. Talking about the 2018 Bears, I mean, just looking at the team that Mitch had, he had Tariq Cohen, which was one of the best gadget players in the league for quite some time. He had Jordan Howard, who almost rushed for 1,000 yards that season, a very good running back. 
He had a uh, Taylor Gaber who had 700 yards receiving, uh, receiving Allen Robinson who had 700, Trey Burton who had 600. He had a very solid team, and then of course he had an incredible defense behind him. He had what he needed to succeed. He just wasn't the guy. If he was the guy, the Bears probably beat the Eagles and go farther than what where they went. And so the worry is. You do that for Justin, doesn't work out. Caleb goes somewhere and succeed. You can't live with it. As I said, I'm not going to hold you yesterday. You can't live with that. I can't live with that. If I'm a general manager, if I'm Ryan Poles, I can't live with that decision. I would rather reset the QB clock, which gives myself time as general manager, but also gives the team a better chance because this is an unknown factor. But the unknown factor also comes with the fact that he was the best quarterback in the country his Heisman year. And even though this year was not as good as his Heisman year, it was still a damn good year. And so understanding that, and you know, some people have called him the greatest prospect in, in quite some time. I don't think he was better than Trevor Lawrence as a prospect. He sure as shit wasn't better than Joe Burrow as a prospect. But if you Trevor said that, Lawrence, did Trevor Lawrence win Heisman or no? Actually, I don't know. I don't think he did. I don't think he did, but Trevor Lawrence was an incredible keeper. Trevor Lawrence was great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I will say, though, that uh, that draft with him adjustment is doo-doo. Oh, we will be talking about that on I'm Not Gonna Hold You Tomorrow. It's going to be no, he, talk- <laughs> he was, no, no, he was. He pretty much won everything AC, ACC wise, all ACC first team All American. But no, he was never a Heisman, but he was an incredible prospect. It wasn't like Joe Burrow, where Joe Burrow was just like, I've never seen a prospect as good as Joe Burrow. But I can still say that Caleb Williams is probably top five prospect in the last 20 years from the QB position, which is very good. And so adding all that up with the it's business side, I hopefully, hopefully the players will understand that. As for the younger players, maybe not because they're younger. You know, I, I think, unfortunately, we don't understand in this country how much experience can help you. It's not that all oh, you're old, you're automatically more knowledgeable. No, it's just that if you are a mature person, adding in the experience, you will understand the reality of the situation that you're in. And I, I hope they understand it, but I don't imagine it would be a bad thing in the locker room or if they'll lose each other, they'll lose the team. Hopefully. It'll be all right, but I can't see it being bad to the point where it's like a big, big issue. They'll lose their locker room, but I do think there'll probably be a few players who probably have some resentment, but once you win, all that will go out the window. Trust. Winning yeah. solves almost everything. 100%. I'm with you. I don't think it's going to be an issue at all for a couple of reasons. One, we've got, uh, what, four months before training camp even starts. That's, that's number one. Uh, we've got six months to the actual season starts is number two, and most players – there's a good veteran presence on this lock on, on in this locker room. I would say that. And if there's anything I have to give Flutes credit for, and I Billy, we see your question. I'm bringing it up in a minute when we talk about Flutes in a second. If there's anything I gotta give credit for for Flutes. I know a lot of Bears fans don't want to hear that. That locker room actually really likes Flutes, bro. Like, like they they really fuck with Flutes. Uh, and and I feel like there's anything. One of the main reasons I thought they brought him back is the way he helped bring the locker room together after the on four spark start now i'm not saying that he didn't have nothing to do with that he, i'm basically giving him credit for cleaning up his own mess but um they have you have those veterans in there that are going to be able to check any problems that has and and like dj Moore tweeted yesterday business is business um jalen johnson i don't know if you peep jalen johnson's promo run like he dropping an album but like as soon as he signed that contract it's like it's like uh kevin warren and ryan pole sent him to like all these different media outlets he was out here Inglewood at the NFL Network, and they asked him about the. He said, "Look, he said either way, we're going to support." He said, "Yeah, we love Justin. We we would love for Justin to be the quarterback." He said, "But even if it's a rookie, we're going to come in here and, and rally around him, even though we know it's going to be tough for a rookie to be a leader. We're going to rally around him." And despite all of you know, and by, I'm with you. I love seeing the emotion. I love seeing how much they love those guys. And if you read Justin Fields' uh like letter to the Bears, he really loves that team too, man. And you know, he really like it. Just shows like the family atmosphere they had, and and, and it's kind of like the, with the fan base. We will all eventually get over this, and that's something that I feel like I don't think it's gonna be any resentment towards Taylor. And one thing I don't know about Joe, if you pick this, you know, it's a weird uh, uh, what's a uh, criticism of Caleb? Not Caleb. I just don't understand that he's arrogant and he's just some diva and asshole. I I haven't picked that up from anything that he's done. We haven't heard anything about that. So I don't understand. I don't think that he would go into this locker room and stir shit up. Oh, I'm the nigga that's running this shit too. Like, I don't, I don't think that would be an issue whatsoever. Like I never got that vibe from Caleb, but I just, I, I love what I saw, um, you know, from the locker room. Uh, One last just feels topic before we move on. And then we're going to place him in the hands of Steelers fans. Uh, favorite Justin Fields <laughs> moment. 
<laughs> I'm dying to place him in the hand of Steelers fans. Yeah, this is the um, 79th and Hines. I my favorite Justin Fields moment. Uh the Steelers game. Were we there? Right? Yes, we were. Yes, the Steelers we were. game where he threw that could have been game winning touchdown pass to uh, um, Cole Komet. That was just I was like, man, maybe this is it. This is that where he learns, you know, where he where he gets that, gets that. That was just incredible. Uh, the freaking ran through seven seven uh failed uh t- I mean uh seven failed tackles against the was it Niners yeah because what's called the Fred Warner got his ass chip blocked something nasty that was a great one uh probably the Dolphins game is probably my the, my favorite moment because he just looked fucking unstoppable you know what I'm saying I think he ran for two threw for two or some shit like that I had yeah, four total he went crazy in that game he, he I was like. He's he, there. There is talent there. Man, the one that call that pass interference on Clay, Chase Claypool. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, it's just it's that was when I thought, holy shit, this dude is fucking. He's a fucking stud. The Shout rain game in the, the in the comments. The rain game was also freaking uh, great, but it would be it would be that Dol- uh, Dolphins game. You know they lost. It was fucking nuts. Uh, Orlando, good point. The Falcons game this year. You know what I think that's special to me, not even because of performance. That was the last. That was the 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 good um curtain closing. Like for the take away the assholes on Bears Twitter who are pro pro Caleb and think that Justin stinks. That shows you right there that Bears Twitter is just a small percentage of the fan base. When you had what was it fifty thousand people in there chanting, "We want Justin." So that to me was a great moment too. But my favorite Justin Fields moment was one. I'm a, I'm blessed to say I was in the building for Justin's first passing touchdown against Vegas. And his last pass pass a touchdown against uh, Atlanta, so that that was you know the dope to see for me. But my first game, my I think it was like my first or second home game covering the Bears. The first Justin Fields holy shit moment, the running touchdown on fourth down against the Niners. Yeah, that is my favorite Justin Fields moment because I was just like holy fucking shit. But there was so many things. I think that's why it's like it hurts too because that's why he isn't here now either because it was flashes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you had flashes that it gave you so much hope to say if he can just put this together consistently, he can be like a Lamar Jackson or even better than Lamar Jackson because I think he's a better passer than Lamar Jackson. Well, I'm not here to do that again. But yeah, he has I, a better arm. He's not a yeah, he has the better arm than, than Lamar Jackson. The better pass is still Lamar, but the better yeah. arm is clear cut. Uh, better, better arm talent. And then there yeah. we go. The better way to put it. So I feel like he to put it all together, he could have been better. So that's what makes it bittersweet, man. But all love to Justin. We love you over here, 79 and Howard. Chicago sports fans love you. I don't know. You know, the NFC and the AFC schedules are weird, so we don't know when the fuck they'll ever play. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And, and when he'll come back to Soldier Field. But if he ever does, I know it's going to be, the, um, you know, a, a big uh, ovation for him. So we turn – it's like it's like when, when you send your kids out, I hand Justin over to the world. So. Yeah. Let's move on. And to I, the- I feel like, you know, for other folks who have Bears podcasts, I think you should probably do the same thing. Yeah. Say what you got to say. Wipe your hands clean, Ponty's Pilot style. Just my take. Exactly. So as we move on, uh, let's go on to the 99, 98% sure the next quarterback of this franchise. <laughs> you know, I see people on Twitter trying to act like they don't know what's going on. Uh, but let's talk about this. Honestly, uh, if I was, if I, I wonder as a GM, is it that you want to be able to feel some trades that somebody offers them? Let's say the commanders want to trade up to one and they'll just give you fucking the entire team. I know but what if I was mean. a G, what if I was a GM, I would just say, I'm getting fucking Caleb. What are we doing here? If they ask me interview, so what what's your plans, Caleb? And just call it a day. I know they won't. But like, if it was the Joe Burrow draft, are you fucking kidding me? I would have just said, no, nah, we're getting Joe. But you, you, you have any plans to trade? No. Here's the difference, though. So they're gonna do that. It's gonna be like with uh with when the Cleveland Cavaliers said they were getting LeBron, when the Spurs last year said they were getting Victor Wimbayama. There's two things they're waiting for. The pro day is on Wednesday, yep. which which I'll be watching. Uh, and then he's going to be at Hallis Hall probably this weekend or like early next week. Once they get his medicals, take his ass to Chicago, cut stick some good food, show him show him around the city, then they're going to say, Oh, they're gonna draft. Now they're not gonna flat out come up, but they're like, oh. They're gonna draft Caleb Williams. That's this really. So when they say they're still doing the evaluation, that's technically true. true. They still have to see him at the pro day. True. They still got to have his medicals. That's gonna be the most watched pro day in a long time. Like they got that shit. They playing that on NFL Network this week. So I, I'll be watching that. So that's really all that is. But let's talk about pressure. We talked about on the show last night. Oh, I'm not gonna hold you about Caleb's pressure. 
But I got a better question. As we see the people in the chat right now, I'm going to show some of these questions. Now, Billy Ice, he said, y'all think that Poles partially kept Flues because he knows Flues got the locker room already and trade and justice might ruffle some feathers. Flues can hold it. He's running new coach. Yeah. No, I honestly think he just like Flues. Like, honestly. like And, he, and Flues, <laughs> Flues won seven games last year. I know we don't. You know, don't like the he won seven years. That first year they gutted it completely. The second year, uh, his last game, yeah. That first year they gutted him completely. That's you're not gonna judge a coach off that. The second year starts rough, ends very strongly, but you also start to wonder if the QB position might be causing some of the issues there. And going off the idea that the QB position probably could have been solved might be the uh, might be an issue. It might be something to his benefit, but also offensive coordinator. A lot of bullshit from fucking Luke Getze lets you lets you think I would probably still keep flus. In addition, when he took over his play caller for that defense, that defense went a whole nother level. Yep. And so understanding that, I never thought his job was seriously in danger. Maybe those first four or five games, first four or five weeks, I was like, ah, he probably get his ass fired. But then when shit started to shape up, Justin started having a few good games passing included. I was like, I don't think it's. His uh, his uh, what you call it, his job's in danger. And then when it got near 500, I said he's not going anywhere. And even the Texas Beijing games, they were close. They, they didn't get blown out one time, even Beijing games. You know what I'm saying? So this is this is year two. I, I have no. And so when it comes to pressure, I don't think the, the pressure is way more on Caleb. So I know you, you think you, so. I, well, it's 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 infinitely more, infinitely. This is where I'm gonna slightly disagree. With. I think there's equal pressure on both, but the reason I think there's more pressure on Flus because if they don't make the playoffs next year, he's getting fired. Mm, for He's sure. getting fired. Like Caleb, I'm not. Caleb has the most pressure I've seen for a number one draft pick in a long time. Because yeah. even with, even with, and this might sound strange. This my, this my hot take. He might have the most pressure of any prospect since LeBron James. Because even Victor Wembanyama, you knew he was going to the bum ass Spurs. Even That's though the true. Cleveland Cavaliers were bums, the way that people like no, niggas did not care. Like well, he's LeBron, he got to do this. Remember. Yeah. Like, so I think this is the most pressure for any, probably since LeBron James. It might be hot takers, but that's my point. But even if he comes out, and we're going to talk about expectations for him too, but if Caleb has a shaky year, yeah, he's going to get killed by fans. He's going to get killed by, by local media. I hope Caleb's ready. I don't think he understands. Like, it's going to get nasty. In that first three interception game, it's going to get nasty. But his job won't be on the line. Yeah. Ryan Poe's job is on the line too, because all this this big big experiment got to work. But if they miss the playoffs next year, the expectation is playoffs. I don't even have a, a win total because the NFC. I believe you can make the playoffs in nine and eight. So just make the playoffs. The, the expectation at the at the bare minimum is the seventh Super Wild Card spot. So if you don't at least get that, Flus is out of there. And just look at the way that the coaching market looks, and just look how that coaching room looks. You got motherfucking Shane Waldron. You think Shane Waldron didn't sign that knowing what the coaching situation is? And I also feel like, this is also my hot take, I don't think that that uh, uh, even Foose had anything to do with his fucking coaching staff. Because usually coaches bring in guys who they used to work with. Yep. All these guys are from the McVay tree or from the Waldron tree or from the the um the Shanahan tree. Like, none of these guys have any ties to Matt Eberflus outside of Eric Washington. So... I, that's why I feel like the pressure's a little bit more just because of job safety. Yeah, I feel. And um, that's the couple questions here. Uh, Orlando says, "Does it concern you that a lot of players from Seattle weren't sad to see a little bit?" Yeah, just why would it? Of course, not gonna lie to you. It, it does. It does. Though I do think uh, uh, the JSN comment was kind of. Yeah. He was a rookie. He was a rookie. You just mad he wasn't used. He was a rookie. But you even, got Tyler Lockett and you got D, uh, DJ DK Metcalf. You're not going to be used as much as them two. You know that. And then in addition to that, your role as a wide receiver and as a rookie. When they asked him that question, he was like, um, "I'm pretty sure he was just trying to think of ways to come up with a comment." I think people expect oh, you need to have that first that first immediate reaction. He'd say, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna miss him." But also, how often does he get in front of the mic and be expected to talk like that? Yeah, he probably if, wasn't expecting that question. You know, if you're if you're if it's like how we cover the Bears, the only people who go up into that podium are Flus, and last year it was Fields. You go in the locker room, and you ask those questions, and he wasn't being used like a DK and a Tyler Lock Lockett, so he probably didn't have a lot of people just clamoring around him often. During the week, you probably only heard from DK, uh, Gino. And motherfucker Tyler Lockett, probably. You know what I'm saying? And so to hear Bobby that... Bobby Wagner. He probably didn't have... I mean, his relationship was probably basic. You know what I'm saying? Shay Waldron is telling him that you do this, you do that, telling you to grow. He probably had a better relationship with the wide receiver coach, is, is my thought. So 
So I saw that I was like, eh. Um, that being said, it still isn't good. But yeah. I, I I still like the fact that Gino had a resurgence under him. I think that was, and that's why I, you know, part of me was like, you know, maybe Justin had the resurgence before all this happened. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's concerning. It, you know, definitely concerns me a little bit. <laughs> I packed that thing too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But not that much. Yeah, I'm not that one. And also because they actually did a thorough search this time. They didn't do the typical Bears. Oh, this nigga used to work for the Bears 30 years ago. So his, his daddy used to work for the Bears. Yeah. Like they did a full search. Also, Shane Waldron was a lot of other teams wanted to hire him. We know New Orleans wanted to hire him. You know, those other teams wanted to bring him in. But I love that he's from the McVay tree. You know what I'm saying? And we all know the Belichick tree is the most overrated tree ever. Like the Belichick tree is Ass. trash. Like if you want to be completely real about it, Belichick. But if you look at the, the McVeigh tree and the Shanahan tree, it's been good. Well, McVeigh yeah. was in the Shanahan tree, so it's actually yeah, the Shanahan tree. Right. You're right. Correct. Yeah, the Shanahan tree. But I even the say Shanahan that, tree is one of the greatest trees on one earth. One of the greatest trees. Because they're all better ever. than him. Yeah, ever. <laughs> they're <laughs> all better than him. Yo, Matt LaFleur, uh, so I wasn't aware of your game. I was not aware of your game. Hey, Matt LaFleur hey. is an amazing play caller. He is I thought it was fucking Aaron. nuts. Yeah. So shout out Taylor. Uh, uh, you know, of course, Ta- Tony's my best friend. Taylor's wife. Taylor's my homegirl, like my sister. She will watch Packers games, probably sometimes to just like shit on Tony. But other times she's also interested in how other teams in the division play. She's also not from Chicago. She's from St. Louis. But she said, man, my little is a good ass play caller. Because we were talking about how, man, Jordan Love has the worst deep ball in the league. It's fucking oh, god awful. By, by far. It's going to be 20 that feet in front of him. didn't pick the Drake Greenlaw in the NFC division was hilarious. I was like, this is the worst shit ever. But what we always noticed was LaFleur is calling to his strengths. Yep. And also, if a mistake happens, he doesn't shy away and doesn't nope. give him the ball again. So, Matt LaFleur is, 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 a, is a cold motherfucker. If yeah. he had an organization that was willing to spin a bit more, not be fucking cheap as shit, and be better drafting wise when it comes to offense. I think he probably would have. Which a is why I was shocked they actually paid Josh Jacobs. I was like, yeah, that would have scared me more if they kept Aaron Jones. Yeah, without Aaron Jones, I'm not as worried. But if Miles, but one person from the McVay tree, Kevin O'Connell, just in this division, Kevin O'Connell was a great play caller, yeah. great play caller. So that's why I'm not too too. I like it's concerning, but I'm not that worried about it. But there's this pressure above the whole thing, and that goes to our next topic, man. The the big deal, the Keenan Allen trade. Oh, you got something to say? I have to say this on Caleb. Why okay. I think Caleb still has the most pressure. Yes, Flus has to deal with the fact that, uh, um, y'all know, Aaron Jones isn't an underrated bear killer. He's just yeah, he, a bear yeah, killer. Yeah. <laughs> he beats the shit out the bears. Uh, but Caleb's, uh, Caleb ends up being Kyler Murray. Uh, no, no, no. I won't accept that. No fucking Kyler Murray. He has to be great. But uh, when it comes to Caleb's pressure, Flus is dealing with the pressure that every GM face, that every uh, coach faces. This is the year to make it. You're going to get fired. No more pressure. It's pressure. Caleb Williams is dealing with the fact that he's in a QB star city. He has to deal with the fact that the Bears have not had a good QB. Replacing a fan favorite. When is the last time the Bears had a good QB? I mean, who holds all the Bears, record, Bears records besides Jay Cutler? Uh, I, uh, Eric Kramer. I don't think Eric. No, it was not fucking Eric Kramer doesn't hold all the Bears passing records. By no, I mean, like as far as like the passing highs, he has the most passing yards in the season, the most passing touchdowns in the season. I'm talking about career. Bears. Well, Sid Luckman. Sid, Sid Luckman. Luckman. That's I couldn't yeah. think of his name. So besides actually Sid Luckman, there's not any good QB in the Bears history. Jay Cutler was mid, and Jay Cutler uh, collects all the records. So the Bears are QB starved. Haven't really had a good QB since anyone who's alive has seen. And you have to deal with the fact that the Bears have one of the best rosters for a number one pick, overall pick in the draft, since fucking uh, Andrew Luck, and almost, and I think, a better situation than Andrew Luck came in. That's so fucking massively high. And you have to deal with the fact he's a black QB, and that's always going to go against you, unfortunately, in this country and in this world. I, that's why I think Caleb has the most pressure on him. But moving on to our next topic. Go ahead. The next right. topic, man, uh, Keenan Allen. Yo, we were, everybody was upset and Bears to it except for Joe. This nigga was calm, cool, and collected. He wasn't worried about anything. There was, there was no reason to be we upset. He was freaking out. Go you know upset. Why, why wasn't there a reason to be upset? Because, yes, I saw the free agents that were available. And the Bears fans just really want that splash, that person. You know Darnell Mooney was going before he was actually gone. And you thinking, man, you, you ain't going to get nobody great. But my thought is you have two picks in the first ten picks. You'll be fine. You'll get Caleb, and then you can get a wide receiver if you need. Even if it's not neighbors of fucking Odunze, it's definitely not MXJ. You're going to have plenty of opportunity. You'll be fucking fine. My so that's why. LSU nice too. 
I, I I didn't understand the the big worry. I was like, just you have picks, and then Ryan Pole said we're going to build through the draft. So I never I never understood the panicking with it because I think Bears fans are more pleased with there being a splash pick than they are being a reasonable approach to uh to drafting. And you're talking about Malik Neighbors when you said my man from LSU. Uh, but yeah, I think no, Bears his uh, running mate. Can't think of his name. Malik Neighbors running mate from LSU. Yeah, yeah. I well, I have no clue or can't rec- uh, recollect right now. But yeah, I had I, I didn't have any worry. I'm like it'll be fine. You guys are draft pick. They'll do. Brian so Thomas the, Jr. Right. So I, I'm like, what's the why? Why are we so like fucking upset that this happened? People calling him all types of names in the book. I'm like, man, it's gonna be fine. Even if they didn't draft him, I still would feel the. Even if they didn't fucking trade for Ken Allen, I'd still feel the same way. But that pick was fucking great because the number one is still DJ Moore, but you also have a number one in uh, Keenan Allen. He's 31. And he'll, be 30, he'll be 32 next month. Yeah. He'll be 32 next month. And if he, I mean, I don't know, I, wide receivers tend to start slowing down after 32. Uh, I think the only person who at 35 was probably actually like getting 1,000 yards was T.O. It's a tough hill to climb for sure, but I think that's, it's less, it's less responsibility on him because DJ Moore is younger than him, and DJ Moore is still the young, is still the uh, the number one. So that gives him a chance to still have incredible talent at the number two position, and not have to worry about having the onus on him to do something. And it's not like you know the situation of Mike Williams, or Mike Williams is constantly uh, uh, injured or constantly has something nagging. DJ Moore is a pretty healthy dude and pretty much remains healthy. So that this is a great situation for him. It makes so much sense. Then you then you add in Cole Komet, Everett. You have a fucking great set of skill players. DeAndre and then Swift. you get in DeAndre Swift, who I, I never understood. Like, Detroit should have never traded him. Yeah. Like, why trade him? He's fucking fine. Now, of course, they do fine with Jameer Gibbs and uh, David Montgomery. But, of course, you saw what DeAndre Swift did with the Eagles. Kill it. So, yeah, I mean, he I, I, I never understood the panic. I'm like, that'd be fine. Yeah, I was panicked because I just I, I wasn't mad. I was mad about I wasn't mad about like the offensive linemen and shit like that. I was mad about the defensive ends because and then also the wide receiver room because we kept seeing wide receiver number twos come off the board. You know what I'm saying? When Curtis Samuel went off the board, I really was about to lose it. And the best thing that happened is I put my phone away. I went and you know did some stuff around the house, and I came back and I saw that Adam Schefter uh, tweet. When I tell you, I checked that shit like six times. To make sure it wasn't Adam Scheffner or some shit like that. By the way, all y'all fell for the fake world just they thinking Derrick Rose retired. Just shows you how much of a country we're cooked. Okay. Uh Jerry but, Zuma, Jerry Zuma thinks Jaden Dan's better than Kayla Williams. And this yeah. is what Bears Twitter is upset with. Uh, another day. Another that I'm not gonna pay attention to. It's gonna be a long 30 days. Yeah, it it's is gonna be a long 30 days. Uh it's that Bears PTSD. Bears fans will not breathe a sigh of relief until that actual moment Roger Goodell comes up there with number one pick. In the 2024 NFL Draft, Chicago Bears select quarterback Kayla Williams from the University of Southern California. And then I'm going to tell you what the next fan is going to be. You ready for this one? When Caleb doesn't sign his contract right away because he wants the biggest rookie contract ever, and they hold out, he might hold out at the beginning of the camp. I'm telling you right now. Oh, Bears <laughs> fans will call him everything but a child of God. Oh, nigga. I'm telling you right now. That's going to happen. What, what, uh, yo, hey, we gotta get Rome out of here. Drake May season, Rome. No, we're not having we, we have enough of your shit. I don't know how you <laughs> can watch both of those players and think, oh, yeah, let's get Drake May. Hell no, no, absolutely not. Drake May, no, they're in like you see what Drake May said at the combine. Mm-mm. They asked him, like, how did you meet with the Bears? Go, he said, oh, it was cool. I don't think they knew much about me though. <laughs> so, but anyway, Kenan Allen, uh, I love this trade, I love yeah. it for a multitude of reasons. Um, one being out here. When if if you if I'm not watching red zone, all I get is Chargers and Rams games. So I watched a lot of Chargers football, and even just in the last couple years, the dude is a fucking dog. The injuries are very overstated. Yeah, he don't get hurt like that. Last year he played, I think, like 15 games or some shit like that. 14, mm-hmm. 15 games. He might miss three or four games in the season. But Mike Williams, that nigga gets hurt every year. He's yeah. coming off an ACL tear, so that's a yeah. different thing. He's a gamer. He's an amazing route runner. Amazing route runner, so that matches it well with DJ Moore, and he's a different style than DJ Moore. He's more of a grab, go up and get it type of guy. And I don't feel that this is going to be a one-year thing. Ryan Pope, Ryan Poles definitely loves his draft capital, 
in draft value. He didn't give up before, just have him in for one year. I believe there yeah. will be a two to three year extension before a training camp starts. It might be like the Cole Komet thing where they announced it during the middle of training camp. Before season starts, I do believe that that will happen. And Keenan Allen kind of alluded to that yesterday in his press conference. And this is how you also know it's New Bears era. Kevin Warren sent the PJ to pick him up. Which and they asked him about it. I think it was uh Jason asked him. He's like, Yeah, it's my first time on a, on a, on a private jet. I didn't even know the Bears had a private jet. So <laughs> big shout out to Bunk Suit for having yeah, him on the he, he definitely had to say, Yo, George, tell your moms, bring the whip around. Yeah, <laughs> we all finna go get him from LA right now. Yeah. So I think it's an amazing trade. And I think it's going to be perfect because now DJ Moore gets a running mate. And you know what I'm saying? And both of them are going to get pressure good off DJ. That's just the big yeah. DJ doesn't have to feel like, oh, my God, I have to do everything. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And I have to say one thing because I saw some Bears fans talking about, oh, Keenan Allen is a product of force feeding. No. You know you who's mean, a product? You mean our cousin, Dan, who said that on the show? Actually, actually, that's not even what I was looking at. It was actually another comment. <laughs> but force feeding – the only true force feed in this league is Matthew Stafford. And why is he? Because there's a thousand fucking times he looks with nobody else and does it. The only true products of force feeding that I think are, it's literally the Rams. It's Puka and I forgot the, the fucking dude, number 10. I can't think of his name. Uh, Cooper Cup, nigga? Cooper Cup. Those are the products of force feeding. Uh, Cooper Cup erasure already. Held you down four summers. And you know why? Because he found another target to fucking force feed. Even though I think I think Puka has better talent, but that's another story. I'm not uh, disagreeing with that. Uh, because Puka just he makes so many more tough catches. Just yeah, Puka yeah, that guy. You know, he's a guy. But it is uh, anyway, I never saw Keenan Allen as a product of that. On top of that, Keenan Allen has played with multiple quarterbacks and has just been a guy regardless. You would find somebody who's a product of force feeding because that quarterback is throwing to him. That's Justin Herbert mean, is not the person slant boy in New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Justin Herbert is not a uh, – and, and he is – first of all, don't disrespect the butt, a, a butt guy. <laughs> You'll never hear some slander come from me. You know how it is. Flint, you know how it is. I'm never going to disrespect the fucking butt guy. Um, but I know what a force feed product is, and that's come from a relationship with one quarterback, one receiver, not several quarterbacks. Mike Thomas got open a lot because he was great at doing a lot of comeback routes, a lot of inside routes, a lot of drag routes. All that being said, Keenan Allen is not that. But let's move on to the other. Uh, free yeah, we, we got a little bit more. I know you got to get up out of here. Uh, since we kind of talked about Bears free agency, just tell me which one is your favorite move and which one is most underrated move from uh, Poles' free agent pickups? Well, I mean. You want me to go first? Or you can, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have to my, get my notes. My favorite is DeAndre Swift. We oh. need it. Motherfucking home run hitter. Yeah, in that backfield, I watched hella Eagles games, and then somebody said he fell off after the tenth game. Nigga, the entire Eagles organization fell off after the tenth game. You know what I'm saying? With I don't know what calls they were calling, but everybody said everybody. You know, we said poor Herbert gonna be throwing a whole fools employee. Yeah, I don't know. He gonna he throwing the niggas who work at Roscoe's this, this year. But um, this is my thing. Everybody said, oh, we had the top, well, the top five ranked running game. Yeah, because of Justin Fields. Yeah. I actually saw a stat. I think uh, uh my man, who does the breakdown? Baldy. I think Baldy said if you take away Justin Fields' rushing uh, yards, the Bears had the 29th ranked rushing attack last year. That is god awful. Uh, and it's not that Herbert isn't good. Herbert's a good back. Well, me and you said this last year when they traded, when they let go of David Montgomery. What we say, G, he's not a number one back. And Roshan Johnson isn't ready yet. So you get you a full three down back and a home run hitter like DeAndre Swift. I fucking love that. Here's another hot take for y'all. I feel that motherfucking uh, Khalil Herbert will either be traded or cut before the season starts. Mm. I don't do. I just don't see them going with a three man backfield. This is in 2001. I think they're going to have DeAndre Swift get more of the carries and then they're going to continue to build Roshan Johnson. That's what I think. Uh, I just don't see them with as much value as much emphasis they have on Roshan Johnson, having him be on special teams. The only reason he's on special teams last year, beginning of the year, because he missed majority of camp being hurt. Yeah. I think that's what's going to happen with Khalil, with Khalil Herbert. My underrated signing, Gerald Everett. Ah, I, I just remember how much I, I watched Chargers games. This year. That dude is going to be everything we hoped Robert Tunyon was going to be. Yeah. He would never drop that pass that Justin threw to him last year. He is also a big body, and he is a red zone threat. He is the perfect complement to Cole Komet. Yeah. So those are my – that's my favorite and my, my stealth one. 
we we literally have identical ones. It's literally DeAndre Swift is probably actually Clean Allen will be my favorite pickup because I just think it's such a great compliment. Well, that one, he was a trade. That wasn't free agency. Oh, we're doing. I thought we were just doing pure pickups. Period. No, free agency. Well, then free agency. Yes, it would be DeAndre Swift followed by Jared Ever. DeAndre Swift is just he's immediately the number one. Immediately plug and play. He is a solid uh, blitz picker up. He's a good pass catcher. He's a good runner. He knows how to just make some tough runs. I, I think it's just a perfect signing for them. Then Jarrah Everett is a perfect compliment to Cole Komet because Cole Komet uh, is a good red zone threat. Uh, Cole Komet might not have as much agility and breakaway speed or just, you know, shiftiness that I think Jared will bring. So I, I like those two signings. Those two signings I think are my favorite and my underrated one. All right, last topic, man. Uh, pick nine, which is what we should all be focusing on today. I'm giving people to Monday. After Monday, I don't hear any more Just Fields arguments. Let's, let's, let's push forward. <laughs> you know what I'm There's so many different ways you can go pick nine now. We know it's going to happen with pick one. Pick nine. Uh, this is why it's interesting to me because I'm personally going best player available. If they trade back, I have no problem with them trading back because they have only four picks. And we all know two years ago when we was at the draft in Vegas, by the way, the drafts be in Vegas every fucking year, but I digress. Uh, when they did the draft in Vegas, remember the Bears came in with four picks mm-hmm. and Ryan Poles left with uh, 11. So he can he can he can say that you know what I'm saying. Oh, shout out shout out my man Jay Hood in the chat. Said when Justin took the Bears off social media, it was a wrap. We must push forward indeed, definitely. Um, but that to me is what uh, could be an option there. But there might be, I think there's a great chance that Romo Dunze or Malik Neighbors is there nine because look at the teams in front of them. I know everybody expects for uh 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 what's my man Jim Harbaugh to go wide receiver at pick five. I'm not 100% sure of that. We know he's not big on that. He loves his offensive lineman, and Joe Alt is, is, gonna, is probably going to be the first offensive lineman taken. I think he's going to go there. I could see uh, the Giants going wide receiver, but I also think the Giants are going to be competing with the Vikings to move up because somebody GM is about to give it up for J.J. McCarthy, and it's going to get fired. So I don't think they're going to Tennessee. I think they're out of the wide receiver market because they just gave Calvin really all that damn money and they already got DeAndre Hopkins. So I don't know if they'll go wide receiver there as well. And then I don't think Atlanta's going to go wide receiver either because they signed Darnell Mooney and already have Drake London. So I do believe at least one of the two will be there. So you can go get you one of those wide receivers. You can go get you a Jared, uh, Jared Verse or one of those other big defensive ends. Or you can trade back. All three options I like. What do you? What's your favorite option? Which one do you think they'll hope they'll do? I'm assuming all gets picked up before that pick. Um, yeah. Romo, I think Odunze will probably be available. Uh, I think Jared Verse and then Faunga or Fanuga, I think is another tackle that might be available. Out of those, I probably wouldn't get uh, – using a pick with number nine, uh, that's funny. Using that pick with number nine to get Odunze just wouldn't sit right with me because I just don't think there's a need. I don't think the need is as great, especially since Keenan Allen is there. But you don't get him because Keenan Allen is a little older. You might want to have him come in. I feel you. I'm not. You're not wrong. I'm with you, but just not immediately. Just not immediately. You know what I mean? The number two is not as important as the number one, and you have the bona fide number one now. You and you have your number two. I don't think it's an immediate need. I would move away from that. So then you're dealing with Jared Verse, who is amongst the, if not one of the best, uh, if not the best edge rusher in the league. And I think the other one's Thomas, one of them from Bama. I can't remember. Uh, I'm probably going Jared Verse. Um, there's also, if I mean, if you want to, you can get the fucking greatest tight end of all time in Brock Bowers. I don't know if you want to, especially since you just got uh, you just got Gerald Everett. I mean, it's there. So you have Odunze, you have Bowers, you have Alt. Alt's probably going to be there. So you have Odunze, Bowers, you have fucking Fanuga, you have Verse. Verse is probably the first person on my list that I'm going to take. Um, I'm assuming you wouldn't take Bright Bowers because you have Cole Komet and Everett. And you got Everett. Yeah, that's not going to happen. And I'm assuming yeah. you're not taking no Dunze. And so Verse and either Alt or Fanunga, I want to say is his name. I want to – let me look that up correctly. I had I had something on my notes. Uh, Fa, Fa, Fuaga. Fuaga, sorry. Uh, probably will be – those are probably my best hopes. Uh, also, Dallas, Dallas Turner. Mm-hmm. Dallas, Turner, Dallas Turner from Alabama. He's one of the top edge rushers in there. I'm with that's you. What I, mean. I, I'm said, with I said Thomas. Nah, I said, Ed, I'm Turner. Yeah. That's my thing is yeah, you yeah. have I mean it just it just sets that lineup so much better when you have two bona fide threats from both sides of the edge of the offensive line and defensive line. So those are those are my picks. One real quick thing I want to get your take on real quick, like a minute. Uh big news came out this week, non bears related. I already gave my take on it on. I'm not gonna hold you, but Aaron Donald retired after 10 years. 
What do you think he ranks? What do you think about his career? Greatest, greatest uh, interior lineman of all time. Greatest D tackle. Um, not only could he power through you, he could finesse through you. He never slowed down with age. I feel like his entire career was a, a prime. You say, you know, prime Aaron Donald. His entire career was in his prime. prime. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's a rarity. The only person I could think of was like Colin Johnson or Barry Sanders that their entire career was their prime. Um, he's the GOAT. He's the GOAT easily. Definitely, man. Uh, we appreciate everybody for tuning in early on a Sunday, man. Uh, shout out to all y'all, man. We almost got to 500 in the, in, the, in, the, in the chat, man. The numbers are going up. We appreciate all y'all. Uh, our next pod will probably be when we do the draft. So, you know what I'm saying? Well, we're going to have some draft content. Um, so, um, look forward to that. Y'all can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Bob J. Scott. I'm not going to hold you. We'll be live tomorrow, 4 p.m. Central Time on HB Media TV on the Barber's Chat Network. Uh, follow Flows at Flows and Lenny. Follow 79th and Hallis at 79th and Hallis. Follow the Barber's Chat Network at Barber's Chat Net. Subscribe to Patreon at Barber's Chat. Patreon.com backslash Barber's Chat Network. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all Sunday. We up out of here. 79th Hallis, what it is, what it do. Since Bobby Yeagum, Curtis Ennis Know that we've been loyal even when we wasn't winning A trusted source for the news Seven nights